Hello everyone and welcome to this year's assembly on Remembrance Sunday. Remembrance Sunday, which falls on the 14th of November, is a national opportunity to remember the services and sacrifices of all those that have defended our freedoms and protected our way of life. We remember the armed forces and their families from Britain and the Commonwealth, as well as the vital role played by the emergency services and those that have lost their lives as a result of terrorism or conflict. This year, we are also marking the 100th anniversary of the Royal British Legion. Armistice Day, which was on the 11th of November, is also known as Remembrance Day. It marks the day that World War I ended at 11am on the 11th day of the 11th month in 1918. A two minute silence is held at 11am to remember the people that have died in the wars. Britain and its empire fought in the First World War, yet it is often white British soldiers who are remembered and celebrated for their efforts, while colonial soldiers have been largely left out of the conversation. Today I want to focus on those colonial soldiers. A common picture that comes to mind of the First World War is of white soldiers fighting in the trenches on the Western Front. Whilst this is a true image of what the war looked like, it is only half the story. World War I was a global war. Over 30 nations declared war between 1914 and 1918. The majority joined on the side of the Allies. What began as a relatively small conflict in the southeast of Europe became a war between empires. Fighting occurred not only on the Western Front, but in the eastern and southeast of Europe, Africa and the Middle East, and it involved people from all over the world. The war involved people from everywhere. Great Britain, Germany, Russia and Austria-Hungary all had empires, so their colonies sent supplies, food and soldiers to help with the war effort. Britain's colonies sent over two and a half million soldiers to fight for Britain during the war. Fighting for the British Empire were soldiers from India, Africa, Canada, Australia and New Zealand, just to name a few. India sent the most soldiers with one million Indian troops serving in the war, of whom 62,000 died and another 67,000 were wounded. Australian troops fought mainly on the Western Front and in the Middle East. When taking into account the soldiers sent by the British Empire, Britain had soldiers from five continents participating in the war. Today I'm going to focus on the efforts of Indian soldiers and remember their sacrifices in the First World War. During your PSHE session, you will look at soldiers from other countries in a little bit more detail. As previously mentioned, India sent the biggest number of forces to help with the war effort. These one million soldiers with Muslim, Sikh and Hindu background fought alongside the British Army. This number of soldiers is astonishing because at the start of the war, Britain's own army was only around half the size of the number of troops sent by India. India contributed more than just men, as the country also supplied 170,000 animals, 3.7 million tonnes of supplies and a loan of around £2 billion. Indians fought in some of the biggest battles of the First World War, such as the Battle of the Somme in 1916 and the Battle of Gallipoli in 1915. Twelve Indians won the Victoria Cross medals by the end of the war. As many as 74,187 Indian soldiers died during the war and a comparable number were wounded. Their stories and their heroism have long been omitted from the popular histories of the war. I'm going to focus now on just one individual, Kuwadad Khan, and his contributions to the war effort. In 1914, when Britain declared war on Germany, 26-year-old Kuwadad Khan from what was then known as the Punjab state of India, which is modern day Pakistan, enlisted as a private with the Indian army. Within a month of joining, he was sent to the front in Belgium to help exhausted British troops who were engaged in the battle against German forces. Fighting in terrible conditions, the Indian and British troops were outnumbered five to one by enemy forces. They were fighting in conditions which the First World War is notorious for, muddy and waterlogged trenches, barbed wire, and there was limited firepower. Khan's battalion were pushed back on the 31st of October 1914, and all the machine gunners except for Khan were killed. Despite being badly wounded, Khan continued to man his post and defend the vital port towns until he was the last man standing. Khan managed to evade capture as a prisoner of war by pretending to be dead. He then waited until the darkness fell to return to his regiment. Due to his efforts, the Germans were kept back long enough for the British and Indian reinforcements to arrive. They strengthened the line and prevented the German army from reaching the vital ports. Following the battle, Khan was brought to England where his wounds were treated in Brighton. 
He was the first native-born Indian soldier and the first Muslim soldier to be awarded a Victoria Cross for his bravery in battle. Despite his heroism, Khan's story is widely unknown outside of India and Pakistan. In Pakistan, there is a statue dedicated to his efforts, and this can be found in Rawalpindi. Countries like India, Jamaica and Australia and people like Kuwadag Khan were critical to the war effort. However, their contributions have been largely overlooked. But why is this? This is in part due to the racist imperialist attitudes created by the Empire of Britain. However, despite the many advancements made towards equality within Britain and the Commonwealth in modern times, these experiences of colonial soldiers like Kuwadag Khan remain unremembered. But why? Part of the reason is that they were not fighting for their own country. None of the soldiers were conscripted. Soldiering was their profession. They served the very British Empire that was oppressing their own people back home. In return for helping out with the war effort, the British had insincerely promised self-rule to India at the end of the war. Perhaps if Britain had kept this promise, the sacrifices of India's First World War soldiers would have been seen in their homeland and recognised in Britain. In your PSHE session, your tutor will talk to you about more individuals and their efforts during the war. During the two minute silence on Remembrance Day, spare a thought to those colonial soldiers who also fought for their country, yet are rarely remembered. On the 50th anniversary of the First World War in 1964, there was scarcely a mention of India's soldiers anywhere, least of all in India. While still under British rule, the Indian Gate was constructed in New Delhi to remember the Indian soldiers who lost their lives fighting for the First World War. You can see a picture of the Indian Gate on the screen now. However, despite the Indian Gate's war memorial, India too forgets its heroes who fought and died in the First World War. Shashri Thapur, a former minister for India's Congress Party and a former United Nations diplomat, recently spoke about the India Gate and how most Indians do not recognise it as a war memorial for the First World War soldiers, but rather as somewhere to go to pay homage to those who lost their lives in more recent conflicts. Because of this lack of remembrance towards those Indian soldiers, Tharoor has been campaigning in India to create a memorial specifically to honour Indian soldiers who fought in World War I. Recently, there has been a rethink about remembrance, both in India and in Britain. Remarkable photographs are being unearthed all the time that tell the stories of Indian and other colonial soldiers, both in Europe and in the Middle East. The First World War is remarkable in the sense that people from different races met and fought against each other and alongside one another. The litany of labels of the different arenas of combat have become the identifier for the world nature of World War I. The colonial home front, the lives of many women and children across Africa and Asia who lost fathers, brothers and husbands and experienced a myriad of challenges, remains one of the most under-researched and unspoken areas of World War I history. I hope today that I have shared with you the story of Kuwadag Khan and Indian soldiers and that you'll be able to think of those soldiers during the, minute si the two-minute silence on Remembrance Day. Thank you.